Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to another episode of Smalta Jannah. Smalta Jannah! <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the terrorist attack that happened yesterday. This time it was against Muslims and we're just going to kind of see the response of certain people towards this terrorist attack. Normally when whenever an attack happens or whenever rather an incident happens perpetrated by a Muslim, the newspapers and the media are very quick to say terrorist attack, Muslim, ISIS. In fact, Here's an example of the Daily Mail. This was when I was praying the Taraweeh prayer, which is the Ramadan night prayer. Uh, I got this message, I checked it, the Daily Mail were very quick to say ISIS. Then I wake up in the morning, I check it again, the word ISIS has disappeared now. Ta -da! It's... Let's see what the media outlet said when this attack took place. Breaking news by the BBC, vehicle hits pedestrians. Sky, obviously, Rupert Murdoch, vehicle collides with pedestrians in Finsbury Park. Daily Express says, van plows down pedestrians near mosque in Finsbury. Now let's see what the good old Daily Mail said. Clean shaved white man arrested by police as at least 10 people are injured. <laughs> Why do you have to specify that he's clean shaved? Because even having hair on the face is associated with a Muslim. If he's got a beard of any sort, he's ISIS, he's Muslim and he's done something. White van driver injures at least 10 people after plowing into a crowd outside London's Frinsbury Park Mosque where, whoa, before you start feeling any sympathy against these, this mosque mate, yeah, we're gonna tell you this is where the hate cleric Abu Hamza once preached as Muslims <laughs> finish their evening prayers. He's a hate preacher mate, we've dehumanized all these beardy weirdies. Now he is obviously against all sorts of terrorism yeah, here terrorism has taken place, an extremist attack has taken place. Surely Tommy Robinson will come out and he will condemn this and he will say what's happened is wrong, my heartfelt uh, sympathies and prayers are with such people. Let's see what Tommy says yeah, and before you start condemning Tommy or, or whatever, many people, you guys don't know what Tommy stands for yeah, and I'm, me as a Muslim I'm gonna defend Tommy yeah, a lot of people call Tommy a racist. Tommy Robinson is not a racist in the traditional sense of the word. A lot of people say he hates all Muslims, he doesn't hate all Muslims, he makes this clear, he's got a problem with Islam, with scripture and with the Prophet, not with all Muslims. But then you can argue considering Muslims in order to be a Muslim you have to follow Islam, you have to follow Quran, you have to follow the Prophet therefore he is indirectly you know. And number three people that send him death threats that harm him physically, no that is not on. You can't be harming people just because someone says something that you disagree with. The first tweet that Tommy Robinson said obviously after breaking the news was before people start aiming hate or threats at me about the revenge attack at your mosque tonight, I've warned for years what you will create. Come on Tommy mate, gotta admit that is a bit insensitive. This is our country, these are our churches, these are our mosques, these are our people on Westminster in Manchester and in Finsbury Park as well, yeah? We are British Muslims, we need to take onus and responsibility for whatever is here. Now after his tweet he did receive a lot of uh, unhappy comments so I gotta give credit where credit's due, Tommy did come out saying this is sickening to see and can never be the answer. I genuinely hope that innocent people targeted tonight outside the mosque are okay. Okay, that's good Tommy, should have just left it there. I'll tell you the truth, I was brought up a Catholic, a Christian, my kids are Catholic, I wish I didn't. A Christian, my kids are Catholic for, for my mum. My mum's a devout Catholic, I'm not. I think the Catholic Church and what they're allowed to happen is disgusting and sickening. Now here you can see Tommy's not really Christian. Now 
After seeing tweets like this, I'm forced to kind of acknowledge that Tommy literally reaches for anything that he can to forward his agenda. Hope you all stay safe today. As a Christian, I feel scared today. Hashtag stand with Christianity. Now, either you are a Christian and you lied before, or you're just being sarcastic at the worst possible time. Maybe he's just a slip up, you know, he's had a few extra shandies. I, I hope the police are going to monitor the rise in Christian phobic attacks after this. Hashtag not all Christians. Now, Tommy Robinson was very quick to attack Finsbury Park for the hate preachers of the past. And he said, if you think I inspired the driver yesterday, yesterday, oh, then I'll hand myself in after every Quran reading Imam is arrested first. Let's see what this Imam actually done, according to the Daily Mail, yeah, which again, I'm 50-50 whether it's actually journalism or not, but let's see. Moment, Finsbury Park mosque terror attack suspect blows a kiss and waves from inside police van after shouting, I'm going to kill all Muslims. Let's see what this hateful Imam did. Imam said to have pinned white suspect 48 and waited for police to arrive. Now, if Muslims, are out to kill non-Muslims and we do takia and all of this, here was a perfect opportunity where a non-Muslim was surrounded by Muslims and we just come out from prayer, here we could have beaten the crap out of him. Let's be honest. But the Muslims have left him and he's now arrested and now he's blowing kisses like and he's got no shame about what's happened. Now the worst thing a person can do when a terrorist attack happens is even before condemning it, is justify it, yeah? Anytime somebody does this, you'll see them get openly slaughtered on mainstream media. Yesterday's attack probably was a real lone wolf. No network or visiting religious place, preaching hate, no training, just a lone nut job. Let's see, let's see another tweet, maybe it was a mistake. The mosque where the attack happened tonight has a long history of creating terrorists and radical jihadists and promoting hate and segregation. Now, despite messing up when it comes to condemning it and it's Christian sarcasm, gotta put that behind us, mate, yeah? Hashtag pray for Finsbury. There you go. Problem solved. Ah, Tommy. <laughs> Even for you, that's a low mate. You're doing it like it's some sort of favour to them. Tommy, people have been injured. People have died. And you're saying nonsense like this. I'm not surprised at all that an attack like this has happened. I'm just surprised it's taken this long. Oh my god. Imagine if someone said that after the Manchester attack. Imagine if someone said that after the Westminster attack. Tommy, do you even realise some of the stuff that you say? To put the cherry on the cake, the amount of sarcasm that he's doing. Politicians need to come out telling Muslim, Muslims, community, everything is okay. Light a few candles and carry on like normal. Tommy, you know the irony that's there? That's not even going to happen for Muslims. Why Christian hero gives bottles of water in Finsbury Park will be front page news tomorrow. That's a low blow mate. After the fire that happened in West London, that's a low blow. You didn't come out saying anything about that. And here you had Muslims going, giving them food, blankets, water. What are you doing here mate? I've listened to everything you've had to say. I've gone through your one and a half, two hour lectures where you've been talking about your life and I've heard what you've gone through Tommy, but you've overstepped the mark. I blame tonight's attack at the mosque on foreign policy. And what do you know about foreign policy, Tommy? You haven't looked into it. Do you know that they've dropped depleted uranium and white phosphorus on Fallujah, which experts have said has had worse effects than the atom bomb that was dropped on Japan? Bro, you don't know what's been going on in Afghanistan and Iraq. You've got experts that have said that the people who conduct terrorist attacks are not practicing. They have a problem with foreign policy. For you to just mock it at a time like this? Mate. He's got another tweet where he says, Which verse of the Bible did the man use to justify killing Muslims? I don't even need to say anything. Let me just play this video. Some soldiers call them Jesus rifles. That's because the sights on their guns.
including this one used to train soldiers in Iraq, contain a secret coded reference to New Testament passages about Jesus Christ. Here, JN 8.12, a reference to the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12, even with the general order against religious proselytizing. The biblical references on the rifle sites is only the latest example of a clash in the U.S. military over Christian symbols and preaching in Iraq and Afghanistan. Filmmaker Hughes recorded U.S. Army Chaplain Gary Hensley in a provocative sermon at Bagram Air Base. You know, special, the Special Forces guys, they hunt men, basically. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing as Christians. We hunt people for Jesus. We do. Mr. Bush reported as having said, quote, God would tell me, George, go and fight those terrorists in Afghanistan, and I did. And then God would tell me, George, go and end the tyranny in Iraq, and I did. Among the examples, March 17, 2003, two days before the invasion, servicemen praying, their heads bowed before their rifles, quote, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Here I am, Lord, send me. Isaiah 6, verse 8. April 7, 2003, as U.S. forces launched their assault on Baghdad, a screen grab of Saddam Hussein on Iraqi TV, quote, It is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. 1 Peter 2, verse 15. April 8, 2003, one day before the fall of Iraq's capital city, an American tank passing beneath Baghdad's Hands Victory Monument in what is now part of the U.S. enclave called the Green Zone. Quote, open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. Isaiah 26, verse 2. Tommy Robinson, I've seen his support grow exponentially because now he's changed his rhetoric. Yeah, he's become a bit more smart with his choice of words. He's trying to gain a lot of sympathy based upon a few people that have sent him, you know, death threats. Mate, that's standard. I receive death threats. I just want people to understand the reality of people like Tommy Robinson who are using attacks to divide us further. Yeah. Now, of course, there's terrorist attacks that happen everywhere. We need to condemn it. We need to stamp it out. But for us to attack people that are innocent, whether on Westminster, whether on London Bridge, in Finsbury Park, whether it's in India, where the cow vigilantes are killing, raping Muslims because they eat beef. You've got another group, yeah? I don't even know what their name is. Training kids to attack Muslims. You've got the anti-Balaka, Christian terrorists in West Africa. You've got the Buddhists in Myanmar killing Muslims. You've got terrorists everywhere. Now, if the media doesn't bring that to the front page in the UK all the time, that's not the fault of the Muslims. Yeah, We have to be responsible. We have to open our eyes, not rely on the mainstream media. And we need to unite with the one thing we have in common, and that is humanity. That is us being human.